Hello, this is Grace Chadding and I'm the founder of Relationship Academy where we teach you lessons that they didn't teach you at school. And today's lesson is in how to recognise if you're in a, an abusive relationship because, you know, many people are in abusive relationships and they don't even realise that it is actually abusive because the nature of an abusive relationship is partly to make you think that it's just you. And so I'm just gonna go through 10 points that may give you the clue as to whether you may be in an abusive relationship or not, because it's a very useful thing to know. So the first thing is this. It's usually covered up. Now, if you find yourself unhappy with how your partner is treating you and the things he says and does or, or the things he doesn't say or doesn't do, uh, if there are aspects of the relationship that uh, on an ongoing basis you are very unhappy about how you're being treated, um, that may be abusive. Um, and if you cover it up because you're too embarrassed to tell anybody about it or you feel too ashamed about how you're being treated, then the covering up may be a sign that you're in an abusive relationship. If both of you constantly pretend like everything's fine, uh, covering up is one aspect of an abusive relationship. Um, another thing is, these are not really in order of priority or importance. Um, if your partner is, um, if you find that your partner um, is very jealous and very possessive, uh, that also can be abusive. Um, now, in the early stages of a relationship, a lot of people think if he is constantly checking up on you or asking you questions about where you've been, what have you done, it, it can seem like, you know, that they're just taking a keen interest in you. And if they're possessive and they don't want you to go out with your friends and they want you to, you know, stay with them or they want to come everywhere with you, it can seem a little bit flattering at first. But actually when it's ongoing, and there is that kind of possessiveness that doesn't want you to be mixing with other people or going any place that they don't approve of or that they don't know of um, or seeing anybody that they don't approve of. Uh, you know, that is a sign of an abusive relationship. Uh, and the, the jealousy, um, constantly um, imagining that you're seeing somebody or that you've been talking to somebody on the phone. I actually heard recently, uh, one woman told me that um, her ex, because he had been very abusive, her ex uh, objected to her having a male voice on her sat-nav. So it can go to that extent. And also, you know, the, the, it, it ties in with control, which I'll say something about in a minute, but uh, jealousy and possessiveness definitely are a huge alarm uh, bell ringing to take notice of. Um, another thing is the fact that you may find yourself normalising it and you may find yourself uh, thinking oh, that it's okay and because you knew somebody else who was in a relationship like that. So when you make something kind of normal and it's you fit it in with it and it's how you live and you just constantly uh, don't do anything that he wouldn't want you to do and you're constantly second guessing uh, what he wouldn't be happy with and so you adapt and adjust your life to fit in with it and you make it what's normal for you, um, that's, that's a, a sign that that relationship is abusive. And don't forget, if you've got children, however you're behaving is what you're role modeling for those children. So they will take it that that's normal and they will get into similar kinds of relationship and they will live their life in that way. So if you find yourself um, adjusting and 
your life and making it the norm, then that's another sign. So, something else that you might not think is abusive because, you know, oh, contempt. Being treated with contempt is abusive. If someone constantly speaks down to you, uh, discounts everything that's important to you or that matters to you, um, you know, treats you as if anything that, that matters to you isn't important, if they're dismissive in how they look at you, you know, the shark eye roll, or oh, here she goes again, uh, and, and you know, is dismissive in their gestures, their language, their tone, how they are with you, and especially as well, if they're like that when you're in company, that they put you down, they discount um, you know, what, what you've got to say and your views and opinions, then that is abusive and it is not good for you to be tolerating being treated contemptuously. Um, the next one is if you are constantly being blamed for his behaviour. Another sign of an abusive relationship is when the abusing partner is behaving abusively, i.e. they're either treating you with contempt or they're hitting you. Um, I know quite a number of women, when I have said to them, uh, has he ever been violent to you? They'll say, um, no, but, um, well, he has slapped me a few times. Well, just for the record, a slap by anyone is an assault. It is someone being violent to you. It is domestic abuse. You should not allow anyone to slap you. And, you know, there's something um, contemptuous about a slap as well. No one has the right to do that to you. And so you need to not allow them. But one of the other signs is that when they're behaving badly, they say, well, if you were more of a woman, I wouldn't have to do that. If you were a better wife, I wouldn't have to, to behave this way. If you were a better mother, if you were a better housekeeper, if you did, you know, better sex, better everything, if you managed your life differently, if you didn't um, talk to all those other people or put all those other people before me, then I wouldn't have to behave this way. You're making me hit you. Now, that is definitely a clear sign of abusive behaviour when someone is actually blaming you for their bad behaviour. So take note of that one. Another one is isolation. Uh, people in abusive relationships, the abusing person will often isolate them because they don't want them to mix with their friends. So they will start to find fault with your friends um, they will um, tell you gossip, they will make things up, they will say things about your friends and they will discourage you from seeing them and in fact because they begin to make so much fuss every time you're going to see your friend you begin to try to avoid seeing the friends because you don't want all the fuss or the arguments that keep coming up because he doesn't want you to see your friends. It's the same thing with family members. He will cause strife with members of your family and between you and your family members. And gradually, over a period of time, isolate you from your friends and family. And possibly may even suggest moving to an area that makes it more difficult for you to uh, keep in touch with them. Also, some of the other things which I'll touch on, like controlling money, uh, controlling use of the phone, controlling use of computers and means of contact, uh, mean that it becomes more awkward or difficult for you to stay in contact with your friends and family. So you gradually become isolated. And one of the things about becoming isolated from your family and friends is that you only have his perspective then on pretty well most things. 
and gradually you become a bit brainwashed. It's a bit like um, Stockholm Syndrome and if you don't know what Stockholm Syndrome is, either watch my, I have a video te explaining what Stockholm Syndrome is, but also you could Google it and find out. So there's a degree of psychological entrapment that happens by being isolated from all the important people in your life. It may be that you still go to work, but there's, he insists that you've got to be home at, straight after work and you don't leave the house before it's time to go to work. So there's that controlling and isolating you. So another thing is that ties in with that is the control. And the control is about who you see, when you see them, uh, how long you see them, uh, what you wear, where you go, who you're with, um, who you saw, who you spoke to, um, and even to the extent of um, taking uh, note of the mileage that you've done in your car, taking note of all of your phone calls, um, you know, how much you've used the phone, uh, how much, who you're in contact with um, on your computer, and kind of monitoring everything that you say or you do. And I mean, the, you know, this sounds very blatant as I say it, but it all happens so subtly that often women don't even realise how much of their life is gradually being taken over. Um, and then, you know, it gets to the point where, in fact, you're just not living your life at all. Your life is being lived for you. And, and you know, it gets smaller and smaller. Um, now, he may never have hit you with all of this. He may never have even slapped you. But this is a, the, these are signs of an abusive relationship where you are being uh, dominated and often intimidated. So this is the next one. They are always right, um, never wrong. Never, ever, ever are they wrong. Uh, if you're with someone who can never say, oh, oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Uh, beware. If your partner has a real strong investment in always being right and proving you wrong and everybody else wrong, then you know you really need to be taking notice of this because this is a pervasive attitude. So, is he always right? The other one, as I've mentioned before, is that he intimidates you. And all of these, these things, like I say, uh, he may never have hit you, he may never have slapped you, but there is a look, there is a stance, there's a posture that suggests if you step out of line, you may get hit. And it may be that um, he'll throw things or break things or kick a pet or threaten the children, or get more angry with the children, or get uh, short-tempered with your family and friends. You know, these are all ways that intimidate you without ever laying a finger on you. So, intimidating behaviour. It's a way of controlling and exercising power over you. And finally, um, he holds the purse strings. If he you know, controls uh, what you spend, where you spend it, how much you spend on what, um, then you, you, you're limited in how much freedom you've got. So all of these behaviours uh, finish up limiting your life. The bits that you finish up doing is covering it up and normalising it. And, you, you know, people stay for many years in abusive relationships because part of the way that they normalise it and cover it up is they say, oh, well, you know, he behaves like that because he, he's having a difficult time at work or he's had a very difficult childhood. And he's very kind, really, because one of the things about these abusive kind of people is that if they suspect that they're losing you a bit, 
they'll go into a period of being nice to you and being kind. They may even say, oh, sorry, I was a bit short, um, you know, but you made me do it, but, you know, here, I'll, I'll cook dinner for you. So they may actually, from time to time, be a bit kind. So then you soften and you think, oh, yeah, well, he didn't mean it really. It's, and he'll tell you, oh, well, I'm having a difficult time at work and you don't know what it was like growing up in my family. It was all so difficult. And they make excuses and you fall for it. So you need to, if, if any of these signs are in your relationship, you need to start and look at how do you cover it up and how do you normalize it? Because probably your friends and family can notice how you're being treated and they don't like it. And that's part of the reason why you get, you know, this isolating away from them goes on. So I leave that with you to ponder on and I hope you find that helpful. Bye for now.